Very good. So, this is uh, the podcast. There is no lesson because of the uh, yeah, live stream. Whew. This is hard. Live streaming my videos. Uh, because I was unable to display the uh, audio correctly in lesson 2, I had to delete it. So, it's in limbo. We Last lesson was lesson 3 and it was antimicrobial stewardship. It's not related to universal healthcare. So, we're continuing with our uh, UHC, universal healthcare, module 6. Okay. Uh, inpatient benefits, we're unable to go with outpatient benefits, so let's go. Let's find out what is PhilHealth Z benefits. So, okay, who's this guy? The guy is uh, Dare Darrell C. Calabio, probably from PhilHealth. Yeah, from PhilHealth. Social insurance officer, so let's go hear him out. So far, you have already learned the various comprehensive individual-based healthcare services financed by PhilHealth, namely the primary care benefits, inpatient benefits, the outpatient benefits, and other special benefits. But aside from the common sickness and illnesses, PhilHealth also has a benefit package that covers medical and surgical cases that are life-threatening, costly, and catastrophic. For this last lecture, I am going to discuss the benefit package for selected catastrophic conditions and that will require prolonged hospitalization, extremely expensive therapies, or other treatments that can deplete families' financial resources. We call it the Z Benefit Packages, which was implemented last June 21, 2012. The Z Benefits focus on providing relevant financial risk protection against conditions that are considered medically and economically catastrophic, especially for those marginalized sectors of the society. Z Benefits puts emphasis to member empowerment where Z patients and their families actively participate in their care. Z Benefits envision better health outcomes for patients in order for them to go back to the society as productive citizens and contribute for economic growth of the country. Okay, so uh, this is the first time I'm I'm learning about the PhilHealth Z benefits because to tell you the truth, I have no idea there was such a thing as a Z benefit, but it's nice to know, nice to learn uh, that um, those who have none may still get benefits from PhilHealth even though even though they uh, lack the funds so these are these are this is this is a good a good initiative for PhilHealth so I don't know uh, I had like a lot of relatives before who died in he, uh, was, were brought in uh, government hospitals and I don't think they were able to get this uh, Z benefits before so that's why this is new for me because uh, since we were the one we were in our in our uh, in our family uh, we were the ones who are, who are financially capable uh, those relatives that uh, were brought to the uh, hospitals had to ask us for help uh, there were there were some charges that were uh, carried over by PhilHealth however most of the charges uh, we were the ones that paid for them especially those uh, emergency medications that had to be given to the to our relatives so we don't know about this PhilHealth Z pack Z benefits. So um, you and me we're, we're we are learning th this for the first time. So this is a good point of discussion. So let's go learn it together. Z is not an acronym, but just as letter Z, which is the end of our alphabet. 
conditions under the Z benefits are also those which are the end of the health spectrum. These are cases perceived as economically and medically catastrophic due to seriousness of their case. These benefits covers both inpatient and outpatient services at contracted PhilHealth accredited levels 2 and 3, government hospital, and some private hospitals. This includes mandatory services such as the minimum standards for the totality of care that are essential for treatment of the catastrophic conditions including surgical procedures, diagnostics, laboratory tests, drugs, and other medicines. Medicines have been negotiated with the pharmaceutical companies. This may also include other services or alternative recommendations that may be needed by the patient. Okay. For payment, case-based payment fixed rate is implemented across all member categories. Please. So, in previous uh, events, uh, like 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 a stroke or uh, a fatal stroke or a fatal arrhythmia. So, having case-based payment fixed rate for people who have who are who are not financially apt, this is a very very big help for those people. So let's go listen. This note, however, that availing Z benefits is not automatic. The doctor in the contracted hospital will evaluate first the patient if she or he fulfills the selection criteria for the Z-benefit. Z-benefit packages may be availed of by members and their dependents in contracted government or private hospitals upon passing the selections criteria. Hmm. One example of the Z-benefits is acute lymphocytic or lymphoblastic leukemia with a case rate of 500,000 pesos paid to the hospital in three tranches. So that's, it has a requirement of only 1 to 10 years old. ALL is one of those cancers that, if I'm right, it's curable. So package of 500,000, that's, that's good. That's big, actually. Reimbursement to the contracted hospital is by tranche payment. For first tranche, an amount of 300,000 pesos will be reimbursed after filing within 60 calendar days upon discharge after the first induction phase. The second tranche, on the other hand, is 125,000 pesos and will be reimbursed after filing within 60 days after the third maintenance cycle. Lastly, the third tranche is 75,000 pesos. Okay, so why is this catastrophic? Unless it is... Uh... Uh, emergency. This is third maintenance cycle. This is chemotherapy already. And will be reimbursed after filing within six days after the seventh maintenance cycle. Other C benefit packages which may be availed of by the members and their dependents include stages 0 to 3A breast cancer. Sorry, I'm, I'm a very fast reader. I'm already in bypass graft surgery. 550,000. So that's good. However, uh, if I remember right, bypass graft surgery minimum the amounts of about a million. But that was like ten years ago. So I do not know if if uh, if this is going to be if this can be done in government hospitals for only five hundred fifty thousand or half a million. That's 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 good. Surgery also for tetralogy of follow. This used to be like a million per operation, so this is this is good. However, end state end stage. I think this is end stage renal disease. You know, end state renal. The current kidney transplantation. See, all of these operations cost about a million. That was when I was. I uh, know that was when I was going around the hospitals. This is this really is new. So let's go. Prostate cancer is always low risk, intermediate risk. And uh, so what does it? Uh, I'm still finding this out. Let's go. Let's go. Low to intermediate risk prostate cancer, end stage renal disease that is eligible for kidney transplant, coronary artery disease with bypass graft surgery, mm. and the surgery of the trilogy of a low. 
The benefit packages also include surgery for the ventricular septal defect, cervical cancer for the chemoradiation and bracket therapy, surgery and chemoradiation with linear accelerator and bracket therapy, okay. mobility, orthosis, rehabilitation and prosthesis help, or Z-morph, and end-stage renal disease that requires peritoneal dialysis. So, as you can see here, cervical cancer, they already have recommendations as to the management. So, even though patients who want chemotherapy for stages 1A1 and 1A2, they will only cover surgery. Okay. Z-morph. Okay, okay, okay. Requiring peritoneal dialysis. So, those who have, who are, have, relatives with end-stage renal disease peritoneal dialysis is the alternative to hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis is much cheaper probably by 90 percent unfortunately it's very tedious so this is something that uh, people need to know so that's why 270,000 may cover for peritoneal dialysis We also have Z benefit package for colon and rectum cancer for different stages. Also, under the Z benefits are selected orthopedic implants for hip arthroplasty, hip fixation, pertoquanteric fracture, and femoral shaft fracture. There are also Z benefits for premature and small newborns and mother who are at risk of preterm delivery, femoral shaft fracture. Okay. Um, for orthopedic patients, these are common among elderly. Okay, so people who have hip fractures, yeah, uh, are usually those that are elderly. So this is something I can, I probably should screenshot because um, I can now tell my patients that those that are very I don't know, uh, anxious about surgery that they can have the surgery done using only field help because this this is a higher valuation for those that I've met in the hosp in the government hospital so you know this is this is good there are also Z benefits for premature and small newborns and mother who are at risk of preterm delivery. Pregnant women who are in their 24 weeks to 36 weeks and 6 days of gestation and at risk of preterm delivery, their benefits includes prevention of preterm delivery if they have severe preeclampsia or eclampsia, preterm, prelabor rupture of membrane, labor or vaginal bleeding, or multifetal pregnancy and coordinated referral oh, and transfer from a lower level facility. The premature newborns who are visually small or very small, 24 weeks to less than 37 weeks, by fetal aging or 500 grams to 2,499 fetal weight. Their benefits covers essential interventions for babies born 24 to less than 32 weeks requiring both minor and major ventilatory support and kangaroo care. And for babies born, 32 weeks for less than 37 weeks, oh. requiring mechanical ventilation so and kangaroo care. 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 Children ages 0 to 17 years and 364 days with childhood disabilities mm -hmm. such as developmental, mobility, visual, and hearing disabilities are qualified to avail the benefits How as long as the selection criteria are fulfilled upon assessment. The benefits for developmental disabilities covers assessment by a medical specialist and allied health specialist, rehabilitation services, and discharge assessment. On the other hand, for visual disabilities, benefit includes assessment, provision of optical aid devices, and electronic device and visual skills training package rate. Yes, for the... Uh I've explained in the previous, I think I deleted that one, uh, my, my mother-in-law, we had a 
feel help done for her uh, the ophthalmologist offered a free uh, catara uh, free ocular lens uh, included in the PhilHealth package so it's not actually free but paid for by PhilHealth unfortunately uh, fortunately for us we have um, I have experience with the free uh, ocular lens with my patients so I opted for a better lens uh, I had to pay additional 10,000 so that uh, my mother-in-law get got uh, got a better ocular lens replacement for uh, her cataracts so that's something you may need to know furthermore for the mobility impairment the benefits covers provision of prosthesis orthosis spinal bracing seating device and wheelchair it also includes your service so spinal bracing is common for scoliosis patients so this is something interesting I haven't referred anybody yet to orthopedic uh, probably I'll be referring to the National Orthopedic Hospital because spinal braces here in the in the longer pole uh, patients had to pay because uh, the orthopedic orthopedic surgeons are private so let's go Services, replacement, and seating devices, and rehabilitation. <laughs> Lastly, the benefits for hearing impairment covers assessment, habilitation, which includes hearing aid, fitting hearing aid device, batteries and ear mold, and speech therapy package rate. To avail the Z benefits, eligibility should be checked. Rules on immediate eligibility must be applied principal member and their qualified dependents are covered. At least one day from the 45-day annual benefit limit should remain, and five days shall be deducted from the 45 days annual benefit limit. So, LGBT check was not discussed on previous um, UHC lectures, so I, I don't know about the automatic eligibility check. Unlike the other individual-based benefit discussed, the contracted healthcare institution shall submit a request for pre-authorization, approval to PhilHealth Regional Office, Benefits Administration Section, pre-authorization request and checklist, and member empowerment form must be accomplished. This slide shows a summary of the steps in availment of the CA benefits. First is the eligibility check. Second is the pre-authorization. Third, return of pre-authorization to the healthcare institution. Z claims are evaluated based on the mandatory expenses of these health facilities, offices, and services, and there should be no existing return to sender claims for Z benefits. The Z claims is processed within 30 calendar days but can be denied in the case when the mandatory services was not given and when there are missing required signatures in the prescribed form or when claims was filed late. The Z claims will be reimbursed to the hospital and members are not allowed to file directly their claims to the local health insurance offices. As mentioned, the amount is fixed per illness and will be paid per tranche. All contracted hospitals are subjected to monitoring rules as stipulated in both performance commitment form and Z benefit contracts. Okay. In instances that our violation is committed, sanctions and penalties will be applicable as provided in both contracts. The mandate of PhilHealth is to ensure quality health care provisions. The Z benefits shall serve as rational health interventions to provide improved patient outcomes while providing financial risk protection for Filipinos afflicted with catastrophic condition. For complete and updated list of Z benefit packages and other PhilHealth benefits, you may visit our website at www.philhealth.gov.ph. This ends my presentation. I hope you learned something on how we cater life-threatening diseases and how we in PhilHealth work together with our patients to face this. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat.
all Filipinos should be granted immediate... My warmest greetings to all of you. So far... Okay, okay, whatever. So, all Filipinos should be granted immediate eligibility. All Filipinos should be granted immediate eligibility. So, why do you need to call it immediate eligibility if every Filipino is going to be granted access to benefits? Apply to full payment of premiums from the reckoning date to the date of admission. Oh, so you have to have full payment of premiums. Filipinos without full payment must settle the unpaid premiums. Oh, okay. So I've, I've, I've experienced this before. Where in the um, patient did not have uh, full payment uh, for three years in order to get like the full benefit package, he had to pay the past three years. Yeah, I've seen that. Which happens to be much cheaper since this is Phil help okay oh okay so here we go this is the part that I hate about these lectures but I have to undergo it undergo this one this is the panel discussion uh, let's just play it and then I'll tell you something about it it's it's basically scripted and the questions are scripted so that they can ask it in English Thank you to our presenters for the very informative and comprehensive presentation. No, it's not comprehensive. For our panel discussion, we will highlight key points from the topics that were discussed in the presentations. Joining us are our invited panelists. Dr. Imelda Mateo, Medical Center Chief of Amang Rodriguez Memorial Medical Center. Dr. Narisa Sugay, Health Finance Specialist of Protect Health USAID. Oh, what did you remove and Ms. Annalisa De Leon, Senior Social Insurance Specialist of PhilHealth's Primary Benefit Team. As I have mentioned, through the presentation discussions, we should be able to answer the question, what are the different individual-based healthcare services and how will the benefits be availed by all Filipinos? Okay, okay. We will be discussing how the different benefits from PhilHealth will be delivered to its members. To start our dialogue, we can talk about the consulta package. Ms. Anna, from your perspective, how can we capacitate the health centers in the public sector to provide the primary care services under the consulta package? And how can we eventually expand the consulta package to the private sector? In capacitating the health centers to provide the primary care services, this will require a lot of coordination among the Department of Health, DILG, and LGUs. It is the role of these agencies to integrate all local health systems into a province-wide health system. On the part of PhilHealth, the reimbursement received can be utilized to cover all essential services, medicines, and other operating expenses to support delivery of care, including hiring of additional physician, internet subscription, service provider subscription fee, and IT hardware. Any remaining fund may be utilized as performance incentives for primary care workers and shall be governed by the internal guidelines of the consulta provider. Like I said, she was reading. And really, we can hire a new physician. That's, that's new. Uh, we can hire a new physician with the bill health benefit package. If that physician is working under the uh, government, you can't just hire and pay it through bill health. So, yeah, let's keep going. And currently, the policy allows participation from the private sector. Uh, thank you, Miss Anna. I like your... That was not the question. The question was, how can we capacitate also the private sector? And you answered it in a phrase. 
emphasis on the coordination among concerned agencies and also with the private sector. In terms of capacity development of our primary care facilities and services in the public sector, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Dr. Matei? So first, uh, we have to define and identify what are the primary care facilities in the public sector. Okay, so the UHC Act describes this primary care facility as an institution that delivers primary care services and they are licensed or registered by the Department of Health. So these facilities can be the urban health centers, rural health units, and even barangay health stations or health stations, which may be represented by clinics in offices, in schools. So how then can you capacitate them? what capacity development is so and it may if i may adapt or use the definition of the united nations development program 2009 capacity development entails not only strengthening or empowering the human resource but it also entails development of the other aspects or uh, components of that entity or institution so in this case we would like to enumerate different factors or the different ways of capacitating this um, primary care facilities. We can start with empowering them by letting them know and making sure that they know what universal health care is, the IRR, and of course even the modules that will be cascaded to the stakeholders and the process owner. She's not reading the slide, but that's good. But that's good. Right, so that's one, and these there are bureaus, different bureaus of the Department of Health that are assigned or in uh, guiding the stakeholders or the process owners. The, it is also critical to build a mass of human resources that are already trained and with right experience and skills and there should be targeted recruitment of such human resource. The training and other supports as far as empowerment of these um, health resources is care of the Health Human Resource Development Bureau of the Department of Health. No? There should also be reorientation of the already existing professional staff in the areas where the primary care facility is established. We have to define or outline their roles and responsibilities, both of the individuals and the institution. Standard setting for clinical care through adoption and use of clinical practice guidelines should also be in place, and this is care of the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of the Department of Health. We would also have to ensure that the infrastructure, the supplies, equipment are properly implemented so that they will be able to deliver the services in the primary care facility. They can be assisted by the Health Facility Development Bureau and the Health Facility Enhan Enhancement Program of the Department of Health as well. There should be expansion or development of par partnership to maximize the resources and effectiveness of intervention. You have to bring together the strengths and assets of the different stakeholders. And this is through the healthcare provider network. So it's a system-based approach. You also have to ensure that the knowledge base and there is continuing learning through monitoring and evaluation of interventions. This can be um, taken care of by the Bureau of Local Health Development. Increasing technical know-how, technology through electronic medical records. They can be um, supported by the KMITs of the Department of Health. And of course, ensuring that they have robust financial resources. And since this is individual based, this is care of the field health. All these components of capacity development are adequately covered by the different divisions, bureaus, and specific offices of the Department of Health. Thank you, Dr. Mateo. I like your emphasis on the capacity development beyond training. You mentioned about familiarity and understanding of the UHC and also um, the systems-based approach. What about your perspective, Dr. Sugai, in relation to the expansion of a consulta package in the private sector? Um, the UHC law requires every Filipino to be registered to a primary care provider. 
um, we have to admit that the existing number of primary care providers in the private sector will not be able, in the public sector rather, will not be able to accommodate the, and serve the approximately 110 million Filipinos that will have to be registered in um, consulta for that, which is currently being implemented now by PhilHealth. Uh, the ratio of providers to population is far from the ideal one, one is to 20,000 population. And in this, the participation of the publics of the private sector as providers of consulta is essential in bridging this gap. Um, as uh, mentioned by Dr. Mateo a while ago, um, the human resource will have to be um, augmented. So uh, this is where the private sector comes in. The consulta availment and accreditation guidelines provides for the participation of private providers. However, when I looked at the, um, um, the website of PhilHealth, uh, as of March 30, out of 54 accredited consulta providers, there are only four that came from the private sector. So what are the possible actions for PhilHealth to uh, encourage participation of private sector as providers of consulta? Um, there's a need to create a more conducive engagement for private providers to join the public sector to be part of the uh, primary care provider network or the healthcare provider network. They have to be assured of an adequate and timely payment of services since this is one of, the reserva of their reservations and to participate in the public network. There are COVA rules and procurement policies in the government that actually hinders even the LCUs to um, immediately engage the private sector because uh, some core rules and procurement policies will have to be observed. Um, we also need to provide guidelines. To COA can affect private practice. That's new. That's new to me for the formation of the private networks while ensuring that the catchment population are covered or registered with no overlaps in service coverage. So actually, when the uh, public network is um, established, it has to be um, in a way um, augments or, or the private network will have to complement what the public network um, is providing so if uh, what's not if um, the public can only uh, cover half of the population the other half should be covered by the private network um, there should also be uh, there should also be incentives or support in the delivery of services uh, to the private sector because um, well, uh, my apologies to the OH. <laughs> With all due respect to the OH, uh, we are more of a public centric in the provision of services and assistance. So I guess this is more also of a um, budget implication. But in a sense, we can provide incentives to the private providers in terms of giving them information materials. Uh, like a share in the um, uh, medicines, like TB drugs, and this will actually reduce cost of care in private facilities. And of course, as, as Dr. Mateo already mentioned, you extend the capacity building to the um, that are given to. It, it will lower the quality of care in private settings. That's a concern. Private practitioners are trying to uh, gather clients who can pay but if they will be providing field help uh, they will have to uh, lower their standards to that of the uh, public health programs so, something to think about to the public sector to extend this to the private um, providers. Probably, if not zero, at minimal cost to the private sector. This would include trainings or orientation on health programs because they appear to be um, 
the, their practice is not consistent with the um, DOH um, CPGs, for example. So um, it might be good idea for them to be um, to be to include them as participants in some of the programs of uh, the DOH trainings. Like for example, when uh, in diabetic patients, you have uh, private practitioners who who are more uh, apt or more knowledgeable on certain medications that are pricey but if a field help will be used they have to lower their uh, they have to bring, sort of bring back the standards to back to metformin as a first-line drug for diabetics so that's an example of how it would affect uh, private practice if PhilHealth will be used uh, PhilHealth should be able to augment the practice of private practitioners instead of changing their uh, CPGs or clinical practice guidelines so it should not change that because Private practitioners are not really a trying just, you know, for profit, but they are the uh, main main avenues for research for phase four clinical trials of new medicines. So um, some only a few public hospitals are able to participate in phase four um, clinical pharmaceutical trials. So if they if if PhilHealth will be dictating the practice of private practitioners i think it's not a good idea but uh, it's too early there will have to be discussions among this so she's right she's right when uh, uh, if it will be affecting CPGs of private practitioners. Of course, one of the accreditation requirement is an EMR system. So, Dr. Mateo mentioned the K-MITS. Um, some, some consulta providers can hardly afford the EMR systems that are offered by the other um, IT partners. So, I guess it would um, help capacitate them if they can be given access to systems at uh, zero or at minimal cost to be able to comply with the accreditation requirement of PhilHealth. There is no zero cost to EMR uh, in private or public. So, even we at the public uh, practice, we are trying to... Uh, budget uh, for IT and EMR uh, EMR services so I think that's something that you can't go with zero or minimal of course the ease in compliance to accreditation requirements uh, will also need to be revisited to consider alternative requirements or option so uh, especially for the EMR um, the GDA areas would have difficulty in complying with the EMR, not only with the cost of hardware and or the software implementation, but... Um oh, okay. So I, I am not aware that the private sector serves the GDA areas. The availability of a reliable IT network is also a challenge. So um, we need to consider that in these areas, uh, our IT system will have to be or, or an alternative process to the um, um, IT or a system's um, compliance would be reconsidered. Yes. That is correct. So I've been trying to study also offline that uh, Data Privacy Act uh, requires that there are at least three people. One of them is a compliance officer, one is a data protection officer, and the other one 
I think he's an under compliance officer. So IT in this setting is very costly. Training of each of those individuals costs about upward to 30,000 pesos. Okay, so yeah, it's not zero or minimal. It's very costly. Uh, to just have an IT system, you can't do cloud-based. So apparently for the Data Privacy Commission, cloud-based uh, is primitive. So this is going to be quite a challenge both for public and private sectors. Um, well, our accreditation guidelines when I worked with PhilHealth, um, our intention really is to provide the guidelines and rationale and rationale for such requirements and it well in, it's in a way of explaining to the providers why we need such um why why there's a need for such requirements however uh Phila can also uh, learn from at least coming up with some um shortened guideline or a uh, checklist of the guidelines were something that can be streamlined okay that's a more uh, better word streamlining the operations from private and public so that you use the same system and there is no problem with user friendliness currently the the system being used by PhilHealth and being trained to us is not that user friendly and is prone to uh, server maintenance issues. Okay, currently for 2023, so yeah, she's right about that. The accreditation can where well, the providers can actually look at and refer to um, with is in terms of. Uh, um, in terms of checking whether they have complied with the requirements or not. Okay. Um, there's already an extended validity of accreditation for more than one year, which is three years for those DOH uh, licensed consultant providers. And um, this is a good start for PhilHealth. And also, uh, expanding the services of consulta will also entail increase in um, capitation payment. However, the providers will have uh, providers need to be assured that this costing will be regularly reviewed and inputs to the consulta package are um, um, to, should take into account that the private providers have admin expenses and that they need at least a modest profit to sustain their operations because after all uh, they don't have the um, uh, government support or the OH support to uh, sorry to assist in their um, to augment their income with regards to income this is the problem uh, consult package only provides like about 500 400 500 per individual there's something that this 100 pesos is going to be a problem and that's uh, for one consultation per year. So that's 500 pesos per sick patient. A patient who's sick who requires a CBC urinalysis will already um, use up the 500 pesos uh, for the consulta package. Okay, so that's that's what uh, what she's she's uh, trying to bring. Uh, the point she's trying to bring that's the, that's the point she's trying to bring 500 pesos is not enough for the consulta package for private practitioners because if I'm a private practitioner and I want to do uh, chest x-ray and ECG since the consulta package is only limited to 500 pesos there is no profit if I would be giving it for free. So I would have to charge the patient additional. So if the patient, so, so it's just, uh, it's just uh, you know, uh, a discount for patients when they go see private partners. So it's not, it's not uh, free. Uh, and 
it's not a really big it's not big the 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 problem of profit is for private practitioners going to be I don't know it's going to be big because they need profit to sustain their business if there is no profit uh, they, they will not be able to just sustain they cannot develop their business into uh, a much higher level so profit is is required so it's not an evil thing this profit is because a lot of uh, a lot of people especially uh, those who are marginalized think that uh, profit is evil but because of profit uh, we have specialty centers here in the Philippines that are providing quality care so that's something that that the field health has to look at they can't they can't control practice guidelines or um, uh, individual private practice uh, preferences so uh, provider performance as a condition to the release of the second tranche uh, is a way of ensuring quality for healthcare providers, ensuring quality in the service that they provide. Uh, this needs, however, to be revisited to consider that there are patient factors that um, affects the results of this provider performance. Um, thank you, Dr. Sugai. Mm -hmm. I would like to point out the your emphasis that the private sector is indeed a very critical part of the healthcare provider network so that the unmet needs in terms of healthcare will be served and so also okay, that the, the uh, public providers will also be uh, helped or augmented I'm in terms of health that. service delivery. Now talking time. about patients, uh, we all know that the burden of patients suffering from chronic and debilitating illnesses, whether physical, mental, emotional, and financial. With this in mind, Dr. Mateo, in your experience in the hospital, how did the Z benefits provide financial safety nets to your patients? So just a little review what Z packages are. These are the medically and economically catastrophic diseases and conditions. So definitely they provide financial safety net to the patients. In the case-based payment fixed rate, across all member category, whether direct or indirect members, works best to the benefit of the financially challenged patients with catastrophic illnesses, while ensuring at the same time that they are receiving the standard treatment and care. And while the amount of the C package for some catastrophic conditions may not be enough to cover all of the total expenses in... Just to give an example here in, the, in Olongapo, there are already two private hospitals that closed down because there were no Z benefit package before. So a lot of patients go to these private hospitals and tell the doctors to do everything that they can pay. Unfortunately, it turns out that the uh, emergency cases were uh, not paid for by the relatives uh, when they were uh, when they uh, when they died there are a lot of ca those cases that it brought the uh, private hospitals those two private hospitals to bankruptcy so the z benefit package uh, it, it does help uh, to keep the hospitals afloat and to keep them running so if that was me that's how i would answer this question unfortunately she's reading a script it's incurred especially for diagnostic modalities and treatment it can be used in combination with other sources of financial assistance such as uh, at least as it is allowed at the moment the pcso malasakit funds and the medical assistance for the indigent program until such time, of course, when the field health packages amount are already adjusted according to the prevailing actual cost of diagnosis and treatment. And other added packages, including ambulatory care package for critical illness, maternal and child care, 
also offer significant relief of burden of cost of care for the indigent patients. Thank you, Dr. Mateo, for enlightening us on the Z benefit package of PhilHealth. Uh, now, Dr. Sugai, can you further elaborate on how the Z benefits prevent financial catastrophe on these patients? When um, the Z benefit, the, the Z benefit. So, the speaker asked the first, the previous um, panelist. Unfortunately, the previous panelist did not uh, answer this, the question. Now, she's asking another one. I'd be surprised. The benefit actually was developed. It was really intended to, to provide financial risk protection. Um, a financial catastrophe is when a patient or a family of a patient have to spend all their life savings to be able to afford the health care and even go into debt. So this is when the uh, catastrophe comes in. So the Z benefit has the highest amounts in benefit packages prior to COVID. So. The design includes coverage for screening and diagnostics tests for confirmed cases and other procedures and treatments during confinement and post-hospitalization um, management, uh, although on a limited scale. Okay. On the review of the res um, there was no actually a published study on whether it has a prevented uh, financial catastrophe. Um, apparently, there was um, a study in 2016, but um, I'm not quite sure of the results. It was a positive result. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we will have to review these results. And um, given the current situation, uh, the situation at the time, since the, the packages were developed in 2012 or 2013, mm. so I think as Dr. Mateo mentioned a while ago, it's, um, it's high time for PhilHealth to, re to revisit the package now. And given the present situation with intense um, infection prevention and control measures, being instituted in many many facilities or in most facilities, this leads actually to um, additional cost of care, notwithstanding the inflation in uh, medical care. So um, I suggest that um, it is recommended, though, that a new study be done. Whether okay, so you don't really need a study to be done because. Uh, you, you just need to compare the previous to the present, so that's the problem. Uh, previously, uh, patients were unable to unable to pay. Uh, those were like, for example, like uh, my tito was had a stroke, and my tito does not have life savings. Okay, he he drank away all types of savings until he had a stroke and he was brought to the hospital and the hospital was requesting for 27,000 pesos to be able to give um, him an anti anti thrombotic medication multiplace okay so since uh, we didn't have 27,000 pesos and he didn't have 27,000 pesos you can just you can just guess what happened he died after after no, I, I wasn't the doctor yet but I was able to recall that and that happened like uh, 20 in the, in the early 2000s in the early 2000s so that happened in the early 2000s where the Z benefit was not yet in place so if if I haven't had the experience of uh, using the Z benefit package, but if that were to happen today, uh, my people would have had the uh, altiplace given on the emergency room and then be covered by the Z benefit package. 
So it is it it does prevent the financial catastrophe because uh, my that my tito was um, my tito was uh, the breadwinner of the family. So of his family. So it it if if the Z benefit was there, the the family would not have would not have uh, a very negative outcome then. So you really don't need the study because as I see it if if the Z benefit is uh, given uh, this is the only problem the uh, the eligibility requirements so I'm, so I'm still reading on the eligibility requirements so as long as uh, they are eligible they are they have access to the Z benefit then uh, it's not just a financial catastrophe but also death of the patient is going to be prevented if the Z benefit package uh, is fully implemented whether uh, the current Z benefit is still responsive in terms of uh, financial risk protection as to um, there was a feedback mechanism um, required in the circular. Uh, the, the patients were required to um, fill up a feedback form. And uh, although this is anecdotal, um, to most patients who were admitted in public facilities, uh, they uh, claim that they have um, no uh, copayment and have uh, saved a lot on the, the uh, use of, due to the Z benefit. However, for some patients uh, admitted in private yeah. facilities that are contracted by PhilHealth, um, the co-payment actually um, caused the, the catastrophic expense to the patients. So, because the co-payment allowed is actually the same amount or hundred percent of what's uh, the package is the, the package cost um, access to Z benefit is also limited to contract yeah that's the point I was trying to make earlier uh, 400,000 for the uh, transplant renal transplant which you should cost about a million if uh, if the, the if it's still the same price, I I don't know the current price on how uh, how how much uh, the renal transplantation is currently today. So if PhilHealth will be providing only four hundred thousand for the renal transplant, there is six hundred thousand left for the copayment. Okay, because uh, the whole one million is just for the operation alone. It's not for. It's not even uh, the professional fee of the doctor who is going to be head of the surgeons. Surgeons, because usually in a renal transplant you require minimum two, if that's possible. But usually it's a. If it's a. It's. It used to be a ten-man team. Uh, it can be done by teams or uh, two teams of two. Uh, but. There is also still the uh, uh, other departments who are going to be intra-op. So the whole operation, I was able to I was able to uh, assist in one. It takes about ten hours of constant laboratory and monitorings and. Uh, the medication just to put the patients under so yeah she was right about that the co-payment usually is the same as the one PhilHealth is providing or probably more which could cause the financial catastrophe yes that is correct yes where are you going to come up with the 600,000 co-payment if you are attracted facilities and um there are only a handful of them and mostly in the NCR and major cities. Um, these services covered uh, this, the services covered are only provided in higher level of facilities, understandably. That's why only the NCR and major cities are uh, are able to apply for accreditation. However, we may need 
need to visit the accreditation requirements. So, so only hospitals who have specialty care. Oh, okay. So you have our hospital has to apply for the Z benefit package. So it's not that all hospitals have Z benefit package. That's something I just learned. Ends with the option for networking or engaging other providers to complete the services required for Z benefit, mm -hmm. similar to what's now uh, being afforded to the consulta providers where they can have um, uh, service contracts with other providers so that they can complete the required services. So um, that's all for me. Thank you, Dr. Asugai. Um, if I may also emphasize also on what you have shared with us, you have actually emphasized on a very important concept which is related to the benefit package, which is the catastrophic cost of healthcare. So you have actually explained it very well, which is actually very important in terms of understanding. No, she did not explain it very well. <laughs> he didn't even give an example. I did. I gave you an example, and I can. I can. I, I can tell you if somebody was outside trying to listen to that. He, he, she, he or she would not understand why why co-payments will be causing financial catastrophe. Why there is a Z benefit package from PhilHealth. Okay. And also you have mentioned some uh, challenges in terms of implementing Z benefit package. You have mentioned actually updating the cost of Z benefit package in yes. PhilHealth. Okay. And also some operational issues regarding the limited number of providers of Z benefit package, which is again related to the accreditation. Um, at this point, um, I would like to ask Miss Anna, and uh, if she would like to share some insights on the financial protection provided by the Z benefits. As mentioned by Dr. Mateo and Dr. Sugai, Z benefits are really intended to provide financial protection against conditions that are medically and economically catastrophic, especially for the marginalized sectors of society. Uh, the C benefit emphasizes... Actually, it's financial protection of the institution. At least they get paid somehow. But, uh, but then if, if there is co-payment, it may not provide financial protection to the patient. To emphasize power, I think it emphasizes members' empowerment, where Z patients and their families actively participate in their care. And lastly, the benefit envisions better health outcomes for patients in order for them to return to society as productive citizens and contribute the economic growth of the country. Thank you for all your insights and remarks. Now we can see that in order to strengthen the delivery of this individual-based healthcare services, the Universal Healthcare Act mandates PhilHealth to develop benefit packages. Currently, there are PhilHealth benefit packages that are also financed by the Department of Health as public health programs. For example, TB DOT's benefit package. Therefore, the question is, how can we be more efficient in the utilization of the limited resources that we have? Specifically, how can we prevent or minimize overlaps between PhilHealth packages and DOH programs? I will be asking this question to all of you. Perhaps we can begin with Dr. Sugai. Can you give uh, some, us some insights on this? Okay. Um Actually, it's a good thing that DOH issued the guidelines on the classification of individual-based and population-based uh, primary care service packages. Now, this can be uh, the initial reference on what services PhilHealth will need to cover. Um, there are some areas where there's a need for a clear delineation um, where the, for the funding. So, which services can fill out fund and which are funded by DOH? So, currently, there are certain 
some overlap as you mentioned. Uh, TB is one. And of course, other um, programs of DOH where fill-out also has packages uh, tends to be um, overlapping of provision of um, health financing. Um, in, in this, while we already have the guideline, we need to identify the overlaps based on these guidelines. And of course, um, I believe that DOH has transition plans uh, to be in place to make sure that there will be no gap in coverage at the end of the day. So if um, DOH plans to transfer um, some of the services to for coverage under PhilHealth, then PhilHealth will also need to make sure that these are covered at the, at the time when uh, PhilHealth stops its um, funding. Health services and goods are also funded by the LGUs and other agencies, and they have to be considered in the review of the packages. And uh, they must ensure that the support is sustainable rather than short-term, because sometimes the LGU receives um, some kind of donation, and it's only short-term. So we should not consider that as overlap. It's just an augmentation for the time being. Yeah. Overlaps can also be prevented when there is assured full coverage of the required services. When I remember when TB Dots published, I was still in PhilHealth, so um, um, while it overlaps with the DOH program, it was initially intended as augmentation due to the lack or irregular supply of drugs at the time and the uh, impending um, termination of the global fund, which never happened. And PhilHealth naman, on their side, um, we did not discontinue the package. For one, it's already given. And secondly, there are private providers accredited in PhilHealth and the package actually um, encourages providers to uh, private providers to participate in the program in TB prevention. So um, it's something that um, there's an overlap in terms of in the public sector, but for the private sector, since there's no um, DOH um, supply or assistance for the private sector, this is where the, the PhilHealth package comes in. Um, currently, our group, Protect Health, is working with PhilHealth on the BPP and there's going to be a stakeholder um, consultation in terms of which services to be prioritized in PhilHealth. One of our activities is actually mapping up, um, mapping out which services are already covered by PhilHealth and which are covered by DOH. So uh, we look at the goals. Um, the health system priority goals and look at um, where the where there is a corresponding benefit under PhilHealth and where are there corresponding benefits and um, provided by DOH and uh, this is a, a way in which to initially map out where there are overlaps in the provision or in the funding of services and commodities for health. Thank you, Dr. Sugai. I would like to also to uh, recognize the current initiative that you're doing with, uh, with your, um, the project that you are in right now in terms of sorting out what are the current uh, services that um, PhilHealth and DOH is providing so that we can identify these overlaps, a good way to start in actually resolving the, the current issue. Now, Ms. Annalisa, um, any idea on this regarding the the overlap of uh, financing of the PhilHealth and the Department of Health? So under the UHC law, it clearly states that population-based services shall be financed by the national government through the Department of Health and individual-based services shall be financed by PhilHealth. So on the, all individual-based health services, including those transition from population-based health services, shall be covered by PhilHealth, provided that all current 
benefit packages of ill health shall continue to be covered as well unless reclassified by the DOH as population-based services. Thank you, Ms. Anna. You uh, actually have also emphasized another important uh, provision of the law, the distinction between individual-based and population-based health services. Now, Dr. Mateo, same question. Um, do you have further comments on this? Well, to ensure that there is efficient utilization of the limited resources and preventing overlaps between field health packages and DOH, I guess it's about time that we revisit the policies and the guidelines on the already in place primary care benefit packages. For example, the TB program, the HIV, where which some components of, including diagnostic reagents, supplies, expenses, are already provided and downloaded by the Department of Health. I, I think it's also high time that we review the primary care benefit package costs, which may have or which are already outdated since the amount may not be enough anymore considering it has not been revised for over 10 years now and I, it is be best to have strict monitoring on how the revenues generated from the pcb payment to the hospitals are being utilized for the operational cost of the program uh, it will be helpful to ensure that hospitals and facilities are also availing of the pcb packages maximally even at the ambulatory or outpatient services, because this can be the source of hospital income for operations, which may translate to less needed subsidies from the Department of Health. Thank you, Dr. Mateo. You have actually, again, emphasized another important point, that the Department of Health has already issued the guideline on how to implement the the delivery of uh, individual-based healthcare services. And you have, again, just like Dr. Sugai, you have made, made mention of the things that we need to do so that we can uh, further uh, expand and improve the, its implementation, among which you have mentioned the updating of cost. And that concludes our panel discussion on Module 6, expounding on individual-based healthcare packages. We would like to express our gratitude to our panelists for sharing their thoughts and their time with us. Okay. Indeed, we have gained a lot from this discussion. I am confident that our participants have also grasped important points along with some key takeaways that will aid them in their respective undertakings. Finally, we hope that these presentations and panel discussion have imparted a better awareness of what individual-based healthcare services are and how they will be delivered. Awareness of the Maraming problems. salamat po. Yeah. How they will be delivered. <sighs> Annex A, here we go. We want to try clicking something here. I think I can search it better. Download folder. Mm. Click download folder. Okay, let's see. Ah, okay, good job. It's actually available. Thank you there. I'll be reading it. Okay, click FAQ individual base healthcare PDF to link. What? Next activity. Bye bye. Post test. Time to quiz now. Boom, 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 boom. Based on the guidelines and outpatient other special benefits of this consultant, the following are not covered by PhilHead as outpatient. Cosmetic. Is not covered. Non-prescription drugs is not covered. So all of the above are not covered. No, all of the above. Prescription glasses are covered. I don't think prescription glasses are covered. In availing of Z benefits, how many days sh shall be deducted from the? Oh, yeah, I know this one. Z benefits. Z benefits. From the forty-five day depends on the number of confinement days. True of the Z benefit covers primary disease that are for Syria. Yeah. It's true. It covers only inpatient and not outpatient services. No, nope. I saw it. They cover. They cover chemotherapy cycles. May be availed of at all. No, only accredited ones. Only accredited ones. Sorry. Uh, the fellow is the self uh, uh, benefits. 
Ooh. Only A and B, I think. Uh, there was no mention of a fresh penalty. The following are considered in monitoring and evaluation of Z claims. Okay, that's correct. That's also correct. Yeah, they made that thing. Very correct. Following is true about PhilHealth individual based health services. Mm. What? Only PhilHealth? No, I don't think so. Outpatients are for qualified. Everybody's qualified. Man. Qualified depends on what you mean. PhilHealth primary members are 45. Okay, this is it. Each qualified defendants have 45 days. It's the same. The case rate for dengue fever on the current medical case rate is 30,000. Oh, dengue fever now. I think you remember this one. The following are true regarding Phyllis registration process in an accredited. Registration can be done online, correct? Correct, that's correct. PIN is needed for registration. Last name. You can get the PIN using the last name. Registration to a field that accredited primary care facility can be done through a third party agency or institution. Like PWDO. Let's go with all of the above. The following statements are true regarding the 45 day limit. Limit on the calendar year. Oh, it's true. All qualified dependents should also have. It's true. Each outpatient session shall have a corresponding number of days to be deducted. Only A and B are correct. That's for inpatient, man. I think I'm going to go with only A and C are correct here. Based on the guidelines for the health consulta, what's that name? Okay. Through registration, we're availing. Yes, yes. And health risk assessment of existing health and uh, existing. That's also almost correct. Through visits at the health service of choice for consultations and assessment. A serious advice by the telling primary care physician. No, it's just this one. Drugs and medicine. Okay, so this is like what, 30 questions? How many questions? 30 questions. The following are considered accredited healthcare institutions in providing inpatient benefits, except infirmaries, dispensaries. Okay, I have no idea what's a dispensary and infirmary. They, all, they mostly sound the same. Following refers to individual based mm -hmm, under the UHC and its implementing rules. Back to one recipient. Within a health facility or remotely through digital health services? No. Health services does not directly alter the underlying cause of the illness. Wait, 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 wait. Following its individual based health care. So, in. Okay, one recipient. Okay. Has limited effect at the population level. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to go with A, B, and C. A, claims are denied. I have no idea. Late filing? You gotta be joking me. If required signatures are missing in the forms. If required signatures are missing in the forms, if the patient died, they will not get a signature from the patient. If any mandatory service was not given. The reason why the case rate amounts for maternity uh, are higher when availed in a non hospital than when availed in a hospital setting. Okay. Yes, that's correct. 
Flying in are equipped and capable of delivering MCV and LST. That's correct too. Only NB. The following are covered. Wait, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Covered under Hefil Health's in inpatient benefit package. In Bangkok. Surgical cases, yes. Medical cases, yes. Check up. <sighs> Check up is. For outpatient, uh, consulta, what does E-Press stand for? Electronic Prescription Scress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. True, regarding PhilHealth outpatient chemotherapy. Yes, yes, one cycle. I read that one. Is, yeah. No, not one session. Uh, the following are third-party agencies or organizations that can... Wait a minute. Once. Yes, I think both are correct. Session because it can be radiotherapy. Then this is chemotherapy, right? No, no, no. Chemotherapy is cycle. Session is for radiotherapy. The following are third party agencies and organizations that can assist. Ah, I was able to answer this one. Senior Citizen Affairs. Except, ah uh, no, it's except. Employers can provide, barangay health workers cannot provide an assisting, providing assisting. Local health and so social worker, the answer is social worker. No, that can also provide. No, that can also provide. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna find out later. Following our steps in availing the primary care benefit package. Yeah. Except, pala, except. So, yeah, after this transaction code, you need it. Facility conducts primary care consultation, yes. Beneficiary gives the ATC to the field health guest. Okay. The beneficiary does not accomplish the needed forms, it's the facility. Under the implementation guidelines of PhilHealth, Z and Z benefit stands for none of the above. It's the last letter of the alphabet, so that's, that's what I, I don't even know why he said. The primary care benefit package for qualified beneficiary includes the following deemed necessary per precision except RTPCR does. Following is true in the computation of field health benefits. Medical case. Surgical case. Aside from consultation laboratory tests, qualified beneficiaries. I also avail of the following drugs and medicines such as the following except. Except. Tuberculosis. Under the UHC Act, every field health package is dependent. Must be met. Yeah. Package to be considered in reimbursement. No direct filing of the members. All vouchers shall be paid to the hospitals. That's correct. All of the above are correct. Fixed transfer. Yeah. According to the guidelines and other special benefits of following the build based health services will be available off as outpatient cataract. Yes. Hemodialysis. Yes. Only ND. Appendectomy is not done. Outpatient protection provided by the individual. Uh, financial risk protection only. Uh, Following outpatient benefits in response to the efforts to meet the sustainable development goals, except they were trying to push this one, except the surgical contraception. While all admissible confinement are eligible for inpatient or for single confinement within 45 days. 
The medical detoxification package ensures provision of minimum standards. Uh, I'll go with A and B just so we can finish the attempt and find out the correct answers. I'm sorry, I'm not that good. I don't have notes. And I've been taking this since March. I have no idea why it's taking me too long to do this. Oh, let's go. Oof. Failed. It's 17 out of 30. At least we get to find out the correct answer. If the answer is correct. All of the above are not covered. Uh, in the veiling, incorrect. It's just five days. True of the benefit package, correct, it covers the primary disease that are perceived as catastrophic. Are under the field health and patient benefits only, but A and C. <sighs> yes, that was the answer. Yeah, okay, got it, I got it. Monitoring and evaluation of Z. All of the above are correct. Okay, good job. The following is true about based health services ah, for 45 days annual benefit now now this uh, this was the first one I answered yeah. I think I can go back to that. Uh, case rate is not 11 it's 10 why do you go with 11 because I remember that following are true regarding field health registration process incorrect all of the above are correct True to the 45 day benefit, all of the above are correct. So even each base patient has corresponding number. Fine. Based on the consultant package, registration. The following are considered accredited healthcare institutions. Incorrect. It's supposed to be the Barangay Health. Ah, because we do not admit on Barangay Health Centers. The following refers to individual health services. All, all, all of the above are correct. Oh, I did not know. The health services is not correct. Game, game. Okay. Claims are denied in the following. Incorrect, so it's all above the above are correct. Case rate amounts for maternity. All of the above are correct. Only A and B are correct. Very good. Following are covered under field health inpatient benefit. Only A and C. Nice. At the checkup. Electronic prescription script. One cycle is equivalent. No, not one session. No. Session is for radio therapy. The following are third party agencies or organizations, except Bill Health is wrong. The answer is Barangay Health Workers. I did answer Barangay Health Workers because they're the ones we are telling the people to register to. Following are steps in availing Bill Health's primary care, except Accomplishes the needed forms. We accomplish the needed forms. Correct. None of the above. It's not. It's just the last letter. C R T P C R. Yes. The following is true. The computation only N B A correct. C is not correct. Fifty fifteen. No. Aside from consultations, correct with tuberculosis. All of the above are correct. Again. All of the above are correct. Correct again. Only N B A correct. Ah, that's not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Appendectomy is not financial risk, very good. And hemodialysis, correct. Yes, incorrect. The uh, correct answer is hemodialysis. Oh, I'm sorry. So, voluntary surgical contraception. No same illness available within 45 days. 90 days. 30. What is this? Only in B, medical detoxification. Is incorrect, so it's B and C. So, current, it's not total. You ready? to do a hundred percent yeah we have 10 points so from 17 let's see what we get are granted immediate eligibility huh? what's this member independents are granted immediate and must for help however the following conditions must be met the doctor providing yes 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 all of the above are Yes, for medical detoxification, medical detoxification, the reason that, that this is all 
A and B. Well, all admissible, no same illness should be within the 90 days. One cycle is equivalent to 45. Um, all of the above. This one, Barangay Health Workers, Tao. Following are true regarding fillers registration packages, all of the above are correct. Yeah. All of the above are correct. I know only in B are correct, which has but should have a corresponding number of days. Be deducted from the 45 day now. Aside from consultation to because next through the Z benefit, only A and B, only all of the above are correct. Only A and B are correct. Okay. All of the above are not covered. Claims are denied. What was it? Yeah. The following. Are correct. Following our services under the health facility only. Following are the steps in availing to health primary care benefits, except that the beneficiary does not check it. Check up on the NCO, correct? Case rate is 10,000. I remember that one. Primary care benefits for quality is RTPCR, except in. Uh, Financial risk only. Last 10. I have to pass. Following is true in the computation of your benefits. Dun dun. Only in the effort. Animal depending 5 days. Following is true about the benefit packages. CND. Monitoring all of the above are correct. True registration to this one, yeah, consultation. None of the above, number electronic prescription script, slip, only in B, number 29, the, uh, which one was it? It's not that one, except the hemodialysis. Okay. Am I correct, this one? Yeah. Barangay Health Centers. Inpatient. Finish attempt. This should be a hundred. Is it a hundred? Oh, twenty-nine. It's okay with twenty-nine. How many? Boom. Ah, uh, twenty-seven. Twenty-five out of thirty. I got a passing rate eighty-three point thirty. Thank you. Thank you. What was the mistake again? I got my head out of sunroof. The mistake is this. Only in B is a I thought I answered correctly there. This one is also wrong. Oh I forgot. I already answered the correct answer the first time. This one? All of the above. Patient cannot die. Next activity. Level one evaluation. Answer the questions. Course evaluation. Yeah. That's okay. Were there any other topics of the course that you want to be included in the module? Yes. What courses do you want to be uploaded in the platform? Are there any topics? Yes, there are topics. I hate you. We want to know. The process of availment.
of the packages. Like, what does a patient have to go through? Why is it taking so long? What line? And how can we streamline it? I think that's they're, they're trying to prevent that. They said there's a lot of procedures. What course do you want to be uploaded in the platform in the future? Hell nothing. As of now, nothing. I have to. I still have to check. Other courses. Uh, okay, kindly answer. Fine. Fine, give it to him. Platform evaluation. Do about this course. Ugh. Requirement. By Pido Sambales. <laughs> I got my head on it. If are you satisfied? Yes. Somehow. Submit questionnaire. Boom. Thank you for completing this questionnaire. Next activity. Learner's profile for all room. I cannot answer this one. Oops. Because this contains um, something personal. So bye bye guys. This is Zero Million MD and I'll be getting this certification once I log off. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys like this reaction video I have tried to be as honest as possible if there are things because you'd probably be listening to this past 2023 so this is something you can look back to uh, the recording date is 2023 so if you're viewing this two to three years from now where everything is streamlined you you know how my mind works right now <laughs> here in 2023 so thank you very much for watching this is your md hope you like this bit and hope you support my channel thank you and goodbye